Welcome, everyone, to this afternoon's webinar. This is Using Staff Picks to Promote Novelists. I'm Charlie Taylor, one of the CE consultants here at KDLA. I'll be uh, facilitating this webinar today for our presenter, uh, Stacey Stamper. We'll do a little introduction of her in just a second. I um, want to do a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, we have a couple polls while I'm talking. If you haven't taken them yet, go ahead and do that. They're on the bottom of the screen. They're sort of in the middle. Let us know your patron's comfort level and your comfort level with Novelist. Um, in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you can see the chat pod. There is a little chat coming in there, and we'll use that for any questions you may have for Stacy, or also any technical issues that you may run across during today's webinar. Please feel free to chat those in, and we'll uh, get to those and do our best to help you. If you have issues with the sound, um, we're not anticipating any, but if you do, uh, click meeting in the top left-hand corner, and then the audio setup wizard. It'll give you a series of instructions to follow, and that takes care of about 99% of the problem. At the end of today's webinar, uh, you'll be able to download your own copy of the slides, and you'll also, for our live attendees, be receiving a certificate of attendance for being with us today. So just to wrap up the polls before we move along, it looks like yeah, most patrons, most of you all think your patrons probably have never heard of novelists, so this is good. This is a great intro uh, way for you to introduce it to them, and most of you are comfortable with it. Uh, we have the majority of you say it's okay. <laughs> I use it. Don't love it. Maybe you'll love it after today. So I'm going to go ahead and change the screen over for our presenter. Her name is Stacy Stamper. She's the Media Design Specialist at the Paul Sawyer Public Library here in Frankfurt. And I'll tell you, as a uh, CE consultant, I see a lot of PowerPoints, but this one is the prettiest one I've ever seen. It's just lovely. So you all are in for a treat. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and mute my phone and turn it over to Stacey. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for having me on here for this presentation. Uh, we'll just go ahead and jump right in. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so we, first I want to kind of introduce this, um, kind of where, how, how we came up with all of this. Um, good. Okay. Um, it's a good thing this happened right at the beginning, so we didn't miss anything. Let's just start over. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right. Okay. Um, well, I guess we'll just jump right back in. Um, I want to kind of talk about first, kind of introduce this um, with how we came, kind of where we came from to get this idea. Um, I had attended the Library Marketing and Communications Conference last November. Got a lot of ideas about that, about um, showing personality and being personable, and um, how to like marketing the staff members and how the staff members are the greatest resource and things like that. So then right after that, um, I listened to a recorded webinar from Novelist. Uh, it's actually on their YouTube channel called Grow Your Novelist Usage. Lots of great ideas. And that kind of gave me um, a kind of stepping stones to put those big ideas from the conference into concrete actions uh, so that the timing of those two things just kind of fell together really well uh, and kind of snowballed into this idea. So some of the buzzwords were to be personable, show personality, and put a face with it. So we literally put a face with the staff picks. <laughs> I wanted this to be an ongoing project. I wanted uh, it to be very personable. I wanted people to know where these recommendations and staff picks were coming from. Um, uh, my idea behind it was that patrons would be more likely to put weight on a, rec on a book recommendation. Uh, if they knew that that person had recommended books that they've liked in the past. So 
and what I'll talk, kind of talk about that when when I talk about how we rolled it out, but I wanted them to know where it came from, and I wanted them to have kind of a history with the person. If they see that uh, a certain staff member recommended these books and they really like those books, they're going to put more weight on the next re recommendation that that person makes. So that's kind of where, where we were trying to go with this. So here's our campaign. This is kind of what we did. Uh, I decided to set goals before I rolled it out. I wanted to increase the staff knowledge, which our staff was pretty knowledgeable, but I wanted to increase that. I wanted to increase patron knowledge, and I wanted to increase usage 20%. That 20% was just a number that I pulled out of the air. This is the first time that I've um, kind of set, set a quantifiable goal, a measurable goal. I wanted something that I could measure and kind of see how we're doing, see how successful it was. So I just pulled out 20% because it sounded good. I didn't know if that was realistic or not, but I figured it's something that we can shoot for and see how it goes. Because um, this is the first time we've done this. I didn't know how well people would respond to it. We went from January to March. That was our, we were going to do a quarter. Uh, it went so well that we just kept on kept on going, and we kept on going. We're still going, but it's kind of slowed down a little bit after about June. So we went for a good six months, for sure. The whole novelist campaign um, was three parts. We're going to be talking mostly about just one of the parts, the staff picks part. Um, I. There was, there was because sayings that I borrowed from the Durango Public Library, which is one of the presenters in that novelist recorded webinar, Grow Your Novelist Usage. They use these sayings on the, their publications, and I thought it was just perfect. I um, emailed the, uh, the, that presenter and see if, to see if I could get her permission on, on using these sayings because they were just so catchy. Um, they were like, because graphic novels are more than just capes and tights, um, that one of them was because you've read Hop on Pop 100 times, because it takes years for George R. R. Martin to write another book, things like that. Uh, so I used those on a lot of posters and slides to get people kind of, this is why you want to use Novelist. And then uh, because we did this through February, um, we did a book blind date project uh, which we've done before, but this time I added a genre twist to it, so it was a little bit different. We the the image that you see on the slide that was a card that we put in each book, and on the back side of it it talked about uh, novelist, and uh, on the bags that we put the books in I printed genre headings from novelist, so people got a little bit of a sample of what they're going to find in that bag and on their book blind date. So it's almost like more like speed dating maybe uh, than a completely blind date. But it, we took novelists and made that a huge part of that book blind date project. And then we did novelist ambassadors slash staff picks. Um, novelist ambassadors is just kind of what we call the people that kind of stepped up to um, put their face out there, put their name out there, and their recommendations. So that's kind of, so our campaign was in three parts. We're going to be talking mostly about that last part and how we use the uh, novelist ambassadors to uh, get, this, get this out there. All right, so staff buy-in. I could not do this without staff. There's just no way. Uh, they were vital to uh, the ambassador program that we kind of put together. Ambassadors, I sent out an email, and the ambassadors had to agree to certain things to, to participate. Um, and then we tried to get as many people as we could. I think we've got like 46 or 48 people on our staff, and uh, we started out with about 12 ambassadors, and 
I think a couple of more um, caught on later, and we ended up with about 16 total. They had to agree to let me use their first name and their photo on posts and publications. They uh, had to agree to send me updates on recent books that they read. I, uh, when we kicked it off, I wanted four books that kind of captured uh, four recent books that kind of gave people an idea of what they like to read. Uh, and then I will, as we continued on with the project, I wanted them to send me books that they recommend that kind of fit in that category, kind of people who like those first four books might like uh, the books that they're recommending now. And then I wanted, I asked them to write an occasional review, not for every single book that they gave me, but maybe just like a blurb here and there, uh, something that I could put in the newsletter or kind of change up the Facebook posts a little bit, something like that. So not for every book, but here and there I would like them to, to write a review for of a book that they've read. So that's what they had to do. Um, I, I did ask them to choose some kind of genre or category. I did not want them to change their reading patterns at all, because uh, I mean this is, that the reading that they're doing is not on work time, of course. I didn't want them to change anything about what they do, but we do have a lot of readers, and I was just asking them to share those those books that they're reading. Um, so I did ask them for a genre so that people can kind of get an idea of what they liked. I also, once we got the ambassadors, once we got all those volunteers in place, um, I sent out extra training tutorials, things like that, that they could look at and go through if they wanted to. A lot of uh, a lot of them already use novelists personally for a lot of stuff, so not all of them took advantage of that. But it was there if they wanted a little bit of a refresher or something like that. And that that was tutorials I just got from from novelists. And also, I didn't expect them to report on every single book that they read. Like if they normally read mysteries and they end up reading a historical romance, um, you, I mean, you, could, you can report on that, but I didn't want them to feel pressured to report on everything that they read. Um, just wanted them to send me kind of updates on what they've read and what they've liked, but they didn't need to send every single thing to me if they didn't want to. Okay, so this is how we pulled it off. What we, our tools and our strategies, how we rolled this out, how do we uh, got started here. My first step was to create the look. I wanted everything to be uh, cohesive and branded. Um, this went for the entire campaign, those because things and the book blind dates and the no novelist ambassador program. I wanted it all to have the same look so when people saw it, they would think novelist. Uh, the same colors, the same fonts. I wanted it to look like a cohesive unit, like they, like all three parts belong together. They weren't exactly all the same, but they all looked like they belonged in the same group. So I had the color palette. That yellowish color I actually took from the novelist logo. The purple I snagged from the novelist plus logo, I think. And then I just picked out colors that kind of fit with those two. I wanted to start, I started out with those two, that's how I, that gave me a starting point, and then I just picked out some things that kind of went along with that and fit together. The next vital part was the photos. Uh, I wanted it to be very eye-catching, very uh, visually interesting, not just, a, not just a photo of a person. I wanted it to be different. So I used like a photo editing app, which we're, I'll talk about later, um, to, to create that visual interest. Lots of personality. I wanted the photos to convey the, each person's individual personality. Uh, I offered to take a photo um, with, the, with the library camera when, you know, when they're here for work, or I offered them 
the option of sending me a selfie or something like that. So lots of personality, um, especially in those those selfies. One person wanted to their cat in the photo because that's just part of their personality, part of who they who they are and who they want to be. So she put that in there. I loved it. It was great. That's exactly what I wanted. Here's some more of our photos. Um, another kitty. Uh, we've got uh, on the the right. We've got uh, Mike and his steampunk cosplay. Uh, he does. He reads a lot of fantasy, a lot of steampunk type things. So he wanted to bring that aspect of of his hobbies into the project as well. Uh, so he dressed up and took a few selfies one night and sent them to me. Perfect. It was exactly what I was looking for. There's some more. Right there in the middle with the headphones is Vicki. Uh, she didn't really have a genre. and she We kind of struggled with what she – she wanted to be a part of it, but we kind of struggled on what – she could do because I didn't want it to be random books but she said she listens to audiobooks that's basically what she does she listens to tons of audiobooks of all different genres so we just made her our audiobook ambassador she would listen to just books of all different kinds of genres but they were all audiobooks it kind of gave her a little category to fit in and then she could also um, she does great reviews and she can also like review how the book translated into audio so we made sure to take a picture with her with her headphones since she was doing the audio book. Um, Mark and on the left with just the, the eyes, just the up close eyes and forehead, uh, he uh, he chose to do country noir, like the really gritty books, the dark. And he did not want his photo at all. But I was like, if you want to be a part of this, I have to have a photo. So he sent me this photo, and it just fits his personality really, really well. So I really liked how these all turned out. It was exactly what I was looking for. Okay, the photo app that I used was PixArt Photo Studio app. Um, it was free. There's, it's in the, the uh, Apple Store and the Android Store. Uh, it was very, very easy to use, lots of different filters. So you can see the original photograph that I took and then the edited. Uh, this is D. She was a little uncomfortable having her picture taken, and she didn't want, like, a full full face photo, I guess. Um, so she kind of just did a like, little peek behind the book thing, and that was perfect for her, and it was perfect for us. So perfect for what I was looking for. Uh, this is Kristen. Here's another example of how it, how the app changed the photograph. Um, she is she's the paranormal ambassador, and so she wanted to kind of do a little something to for the the werewolves and vampires and things like that in in that in that genre. So she does with the the hands and the little claws. <laughs> it was it was great. It was great. She had fun doing a little photos and it was just great. Okay, so then we did bookmarks. Once I got all of the 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 look of it, um, started working on the content, we did our bookmarks. Uh, I wanted to have the staff name, the genre, or category, and the photo very prominent on the bookmark. Um, the, there's a novelist logo uh, on the front and on the back. It's kind of cut off um, on the on the image that I put in here, but on the bottom of the the back side with the books, it's got our name and contact information on it too. Uh, we printed these out in house, cut them in house. Um, the back of the book or back of the bookmark has four books that they they gave me to begin with, uh, and then a little, like just a one-sentence blurb, kind of a little hook to get the, the patron interested in that book. And then they can take these books and find other ones on novelists. So we want them, we're always, everything we, we, we were doing, we wanted to put novelists out there 
get that they get them familiar with that name um, let them know that they can go there to get more book recommendations they can read these but if they want more they can also go to novelist And the bookmarks were very popular. We uh, set them out on some of the bookshelves. There's another picture of them. Okay, and then on social media, um, we did a lot on Facebook and Pinterest. Here's one of our, um, I tried to do a lot of the novelist posts and pictures and images and things like that. But I didn't want to post the exact same thing or, or uh, I didn't want it to be too much of a repetition, so I tried to, to come at it from different angles. And this cover photo was one of the, the angles. Uh, after I uh, printed all the bookmarks and, and so someone else actually cut them all up, uh, I put them all on the floor and took a picture of it and cropped it so that it, it was like a little collage image of all the bookmarks. Um, and it's just a different, a different angle, a different um, something different than just pig, putting a picture of of the bookmark. Something that's a little more interesting. So uh, try to come at it from different different angles instead of just putting the same thing up over and over again. Because I wanted to post about it very frequently, for sure. Um, but I just kind of try to do different angles of it and actually when I was taking this picture of all the bookmarks on the floor kind of leaning over them um, another coworker, I didn't know he was doing this but another coworker took a picture of me taking a picture of the bookmarks and then we were able to put that up there as well so it's just like different different angles kind of that 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 second picture provided kind of a behind the scenes which people love people love that kind of what's going on behind the scenes kind of um, viewpoint. And so there's lots of different angles you can go from. Okay, this is the image that I created for each ambassador and their first four books. Um, I created these images with InDesign, because that's what I have and that's what I'm used to, but there's any kind of um, image software that allows you to take different images and put them together, well, you would be able to do something very similar to this. Um, so Publisher, Photoshop, GIMP, which is like a free Photoshop, uh, Canva, which is extremely popular, it's just a web-based or a cloud-based um, photo. So, program, I guess. Uh, they all can kind of do the same similar layouts and things. So I wanted to have the picture, the name, their category, and then the logos. I wanted the novelist down there and I wanted our logo down there. And then I also assigned each of them a well not really assigned, but I created like a little hashtag for each of them. So for Diane's Anything that I'm posting about Diane, um, I'm going to have this hashtag PSPL Diane Reads, uh, so that in the you know as we accumulate more and more posts, someone could pick, click on that and see all of the pictures uh, and book recommendations that Diane's posted. So if someone's on Facebook, one click they can get all of her recommendations right there. So I use those hashtags. Um, I uh, put a little description of the books, um, and then I put a link to her Pinterest board, which I'll be talking about in a little bit. Uh, I created each of them a Pinterest board for all of their recommendations. Here's another image uh, with, the, with the four books. After the four books, uh, I, I, you know, remember I said I wanted them to continue sending me books as they read them over time. This is a, one of the books that Dee sent me uh, over time uh, after those first four books. So I've got the big book cover so people can see what it is. Um, she wrote a little review of it, so I put that in there. Down at the bottom of this post, I've got our call to actions here. Um, if they want to check out this book that Dee recommends, they can go, and that link takes them straight to the catalog. They can see what else Dee recommends. 
uh, and go to, to our Pinterest board. And then, or they could go straight to Novelist and discover similar books with Novelist. So it's calling them, always bringing them back to Novelist, always bringing them back to, um, to the library here. Here's another one with a single book. Um, if their little just blurb or whatever they sent me with the book, some people didn't send me anything. They just said they read it and liked it. Some people would include a little sentence or so about what they liked. Um, if it doesn't give, if that didn't give a lot of information about the book, enough to intrigue a patron, I got a little book description off of novelists and used that uh, in, in the post to talk about the book a little bit. So I had, in this one, I've got about the book uh, in that second little paragraph so that people can kind of get an idea. Does that sound interesting? If it does, go check it out. Or if it sounds interesting, you can find more books like it on Novelist. Uh, here's a little screenshot of our Pinterest boards, uh, or some of the Pinterest boards. I gave each of them each of the ambassadors um, a Pinterest board, and so that each time they give me or send me a book, I add it to their board, so they got like a little collection. Uh, I made a little image for them uh, to be their their kind of their first the the first pin on their board, um, and kind of what what they like. So I Jesse Sharon loves to read fantasy. Follow to see what she recommends. Patrons can follow that board, and then. It pops up in their Pinterest feed. Uh, I also use the same hashtags, the P hashtag PSPL Jesse Sharon Reads or hashtag PSPL Jonathan Reads, um, and that hashtag is going to work the same thing like the, the like it does on Facebook, where if they just one click and then they get all of those books. And then here's just what the board looks like. I'm just pinning the book covers um, from a, uh, got the images from just like just the Google search. And then I edited the link so that it's going to our catalog. Another thing we did was the display in our lobby. Um, I took the content of the bookmarks and just kind of rearrange them a little bit for um, for these these mini posters. They're 11 by 17. Um, same exact content, which is on the bookmarks. You didn't have to create create anything. I just had to adjust the layout so it fits on a different size. And then I added um, some posters. I had some extra space. I added three of the posters from another part of our novelist camp that I mentioned earlier, those because sayings. And then um, a poster about, no, a little a little mini poster about novelists and how if they want some more recommendations, novelists is a great place to go get them. Always directing them to novelists. Novelists is on everything. They're going to become familiar with that name and they're going to know what novelist does so that when they want to get a new book, they're going to think novelist, I hope. That's, that's the hope, at least. Um, but this display was a, a hit. Uh, people loved it. Uh, we, there was always people standing, standing out, reading, all, reading about those books, uh, reading about the, each of the posters and those book descriptions on there. So. OK, evaluation and statistics. So this is where we find out if it actually helped at all. Here's our novelist usage for the first three months of 2016 versus the first three months of 2017 when we did the campaign. Amazing. I loved it. Um, those are our numbers again. 51 for January, 53 for February, 50 or 39 for March. And then for 2016, the year before the campaign. And then those were our numbers for the first three months that we were hitting the campaign really hard. Yeah, I loved it. This was amazing. I never, 
expected it. And when I actually did the math and the percentage of increase, 215. I was shocked, shocked, completely shocked. Amazing. I loved it. Um, I couldn't. I just couldn't believe it. I was smiling all day when I when I figured that out. It was it was amazing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. It blows 20% out of the water. It sure does. I mean, that 20% was just a, a number out of the year. I had no idea if that was going to be realistic or not. And, yeah, we, we blew it out of the water. Um, I wanted to compare the numbers for the previous three months. I did the previous year, the same months in the previous year. I wanted to come, kind of compare it to the previous three months before we started the, um, before we started the campaign to see, you know, if that, how that affected it. It's just another another measure of comparison, I guess. So those were our November or October through December numbers plus the the January through March numbers that I already showed you. So still quite impressive as a seventy seven point five increase. So uh, yeah. Shocked. I was shocked. <laughs> So we are very, very, very pleased with the results. And then after, you know, we did it for those first three months, um, and then we were only planning to do it quarterly, and it was so successful. Uh, it was so successful that we decided to keep on going. So we did it pretty hardcore throughout the rest of the summer, kind of tapered off a little bit in June because of summer reading, um, and it's been kind of slowing down this fall. But these are the number of sessions for the, uh, the rest of the year, so it's still pretty high. We're just kind of slowing down a little bit, but July was pretty high, um, so I am very happy with the results that we've got. And then the feedback, patrons love the bookmarks. They kind of treated them almost like baseball cards where we had patrons asking how many there were because they wanted to make sure they got one of each. Um, they, they loved them. They loved the, the, the colors. The, the, the look of them was, was very successful. Uh, the display was a huge hit that we did in the lobby. Uh, while I was putting it up, actually, the there was a page right kind of standing off to the side just watching me, and then all of a sudden she goes, hey, that's you all. <laughs> so it was kind of cool that, that they got to see what we're reading, kind of the other side of it. Kind of, They got to see what we're reading individually, because before we just had a list of staff picks on a bookmark. We didn't say who recommended those staff picks or anything about the people that recommended those staff picks. Um, so it was, they loved the display and they loved the bookmarks. And actually, people were talking about novelists. Um, one of our youth services librarians said that, that she had some tweens and teens come in asking for help in locating a book in the library. And they mentioned that they found about it on novelist. And then we had another um, uh, another staff member mention to me that um, they were talking to a volunteer who said that she found a whole new series that she loved uh, due to our staff picks and then going to novelists and finding finding more stuff up there. So we're still adding book recommendations to our uh, Facebook. We've got a little photo album called Recommended Reads up there. I've been adding the images. Um, the staff pick images up there, and um, and adding them to our our Pinterest page. Uh, but we're just kind of slowing down a little bit. I don't know if we're just gonna kind of pick it up. Maybe do another set of bookmarks with four more new books, and kind of revamp it a little bit. Um, but that's where we are right now. So there's me. There's our Pinterest board, library's Pinterest board, and our library's Facebook page if you want to go check out um, the images up there. My email if you have any questions after the, 
after the presentation that and you can ask questions now see what what we've got here um, Okay, so Lisa's asking, how did you get the staff to add their input? I'm not sure I understand that question. Hey, so this is like Carly. The, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm wondering if Lisa is asking, um, how did you kind of get their buy-in? How did you get them to participate? Did you have to convince them to participate or anything like that? And Lisa, write in and correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Uh, well, I sent out an email, um, got a few bites on that. Um, a lot of people were were happy to to share. A lot. Some of the people had to be uh, some of the some of the supervisors had to say, "I want you to do this." <laughs> so. Um, we had a couple people do, um, I know three of them, their supervisor asked them to, if they would participate and be an ambassador. Um, but basically it was just volunteers, just trying to get them, I sent out just emails asking for people to help. And then as I would, as we continued on, I would send out reminders saying, I'm still, you know, taking books that you've read. If you've read something good, let me know. I can post it as a recommendation. Because um, a lot of people, it, it would taper off. There'd be a slow time, and then I'd send out an email, and people would send me what they've read recently. So there's a lot of volunteers. I just know of three people who were asked by their supervisor to participate. Does that answer your question? It was basically just emailing them and asking them for help. I, I would uh, think that it would take a little bit of uh, encouragement for some people <laughs> to want to participate, yeah. especially using a picture. <laughs> yes, and I was very, I was very conscious of that. So I wanted. That's why I let them send me a selfie, something that they already liked and maybe have already shared with their friends, something that you know they can kind of manipulate the angle and practice or or something like that so they could they were confident and they approved every picture if i took the picture here at the library of them um i showed it to them I'm like what do you think about this if you don't like it we'll keep doing it we'll we'll find something until you get the right the right look that you're that you're wanting mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't have a lot of um, big readers, that would be hard because this is because we're not having them read, you know, on the clock. It's stuff that they're doing in their free time, and then and then um, just telling me about. Stacy, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about um, the creation of the bookmarks, like what program you use specifically. Don't. Anything like that? Sure. Uh, I used InDesign for that as well. That's just my go-to. That's what I'm most comfortable in. Um, but again, I think Canva has like bookmark templates and things like that. Um, Publisher has bookmark templates. Um, so there's lots of different options. But I had I just imported my graphics into uh, an InDesign document and. So I created like the picture separately. I created the backgrounds uh, separately in Photoshop, um, and then just dropped them into to InDesign. But yeah, you could do that in any kind of um, Canva or Publisher works great. Before I got InDesign, I did everything in Publisher. Excellent. And it looks like Jennifer is wondering about using Patreon volunteers. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, you could have, you could still have community reads or something like that, where you've got patrons um, recommending books for other people. That's a great idea, and it's still putting a face to it. It's still giving a history to those recommendations, so that other patrons will see 
you know, that's the whole, that, that was kind of the whole goal that I had in mind, that there would be that history there. So if a patron sees that, that uh, Diane's recommended this book, and they know that Diane's recommended really good books in the past, they would take that more seriously. So the same thing if it's a, like a community patron or um, another kind of or another community leader or something like that, or or your book club. Yeah, you could do your, like your book club and you could theme it around that group of people. And instead of doing, you could staff picks. You could just do um, club picks or, or something like that, um, and then still put that put the face and put the name, I think that those two things are are what's the most important. So it doesn't have to be staff. But yeah, board members, uh, friends, good idea, Jennifer. It doesn't matter. I don't, I don't think that it doesn't, I don't think it has to be staff members, but the whole, I think, success of it kind of was making it personal, putting that picture, putting that face on it so people can relate. It's not just a piece of paper. It's someone. It's an actual person who who's reading. You can see their face recommending these books, and you, you can relate to them better. So yeah, any kind of um, patron volunteers, book club members. Those are all really good ideas. Um, and then always directing them back to novelist. Everything that I created went back to novelist. It was every, the novelist logo was on everything. So that they would get familiar with the name, and they'd get familiar with what it what it does. Yeah, you could do community leaders um, and dignitaries, things like that, like the mayor. That would that's a great idea. And just make it personal, make show their personality in it. I think is uh, is key. And always keep the goal in mind. Always have that. Um, direct them back to Pinterest. Direct them back to the library catalog. Kind of keep that, keep that in mind. So it's all focused on on novelists. You can get book recommendations from these people. And then if you like that, you can always get more from novelists as well. Kind of always tie novelists into it. Any other questions? Stacey, I'm going to go ahead and, and move into our final slides here. Y'all sure. feel free to go ahead and continue to type in questions for Stacey, but I'm just going to wrap it up a little bit. Um, this webinar was made possible in part by the Institute of Museum and Library Services, and we thank them for their funding. Uh, don't forget to follow us here at KDLA on social media on our Twitter or Facebook pages. And that Facebook page focuses basically just on CE, in case you're looking for CE opportunities. I wanted to highlight some of our upcoming webinars, especially next week. We're doing an updated version of the basics of um, Kentucky Public Library certification, and we'll talk about the, the recent certification changes that were made to the uh, administrative regulations. So if you have questions about that, we've got two sessions of that next week, and you can register for all those on our um, CE events calendar. And looks like everybody's just giving you a big thank you. Um, Stacy, thank you so much for being our presenter for today. And looks like we're getting a lot of good feedback on it. So Wonderful. Well, All thank right. you for having me on here. Thank you so much. And I've, got, I've included Stacy's um, email address again, as well as those mm -hmm. links to her so the social media um, accounts at Paul Sawyer. Again, if you would like to download a copy of the slides, maybe an <laughs> inspiration, um, or just to come back and refer to, they're available in the downloads pod in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. And remember that this presentation was recorded, so you'll be able to refer back to it or refer any of your colleagues to it that you would like uh, to watch or you think they might be interested in it. So whenever you all are ready, just go ahead and uh, click the X in the top right-hand corner of the screen, unless you've got any final questions. But um, um, I'll add in there that if you wanted to get a closer look at any of the the stuff, like any of the slides or, or bookmarks, that one that was cut off a little bit, or the posters or the book blind dates or anything like that, if you want me to send you so you can get a closer look at the, the document, I can send a PDF 
if just email me if you have any questions or want to get a closer look at what information was on there. Excellent. Thank you for being so generous with your time. No problem. Okay, everybody have a great afternoon. Stacey, thank you again, and you take care. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.